Now the finish I'm going to use for this project is a hard wax oil from Chestnut Products. It's something I've been using for the last year and compared to other hard wax oils on the market I found this one to be um, easier to apply on smaller projects. You can put a lot of without making a sticky mess if that makes sense. But basically I'm going to put this first coat on using a bit of kitchen towel for a bit of irony and it's primarily to keep the glue off. And this first coat will basically just seal the timber ready for gluing so that any excess glue should not stain the wood, hopefully. Well, now that the first coat of oil has dried, I'm ready to start assembling this stand. No clamps will be required for this glue up, uh, instead I'll be using a wedge to secure it. Um, as you see here, one thing I may not have mentioned before was that it's important when you're cutting wedges to have the slot running perpendicular to the grain both on the stand, on the, the post itself and then the base as well. This will reduce the, the risk of um, the wood splitting. As you can see already the fit is pretty good. So the wedge alone should be enough to hold this. I cut the wedge using a simple jig on the bandsaw. Off cut of English walnut here. Hopefully, you can see how that works, pushes it through the blade. Just using a <coughs> five minute PVA glue. Whatever comes out of the bottle, there it goes. Spread that around the shoulders and the tenon. Slip that into the mortise through the correct side, which is that way. And now for the wedge. A few taps should do it. That should be it. Now because the tenon on this post stops short of the underside of the base, it's going to make it difficult to clean up this wedge. So what I'm going to try and do is to very carefully use my router and lower the cutter down to the depth of the end of this tenon. So that worked quite well, even though I managed to cut a bit deeper than I actually hoped for and there's a slight bit of burning here. But now with a sharp chisel, I should be able to just get the rest out of the way. I hope. Now that both the glue and the finish have dried, we can take a closer look at this uh, joint here. It's reasonably tidy, I must say, but unfortunately, and for some strange reason, I'm not quite sure why, but the oil, I don't know if you can see this very well, it may look like a shadow, has left a dark, or well, the glue actually has reacted with the oil, and left a dark patch around the base, around the base of the post, sorry. Um, it could be that the can I'm, I've been using was well, it's about a year old, so maybe the oil started to go off. I think maybe I'll buy some new oil before I put any further coats on, just in case. It seems to have dried alright, but I don't know, it's strange. Well, it's been a long time since the previous part in this video series, but at long last I can finally say that the towel stand project is complete, as you can see here. 
the main delay in getting this one finished really was that I'd run out of this hard wax oil from chestnut wood finishes or what I had to have less um, it wasn't very good, it was a year old and it had gone quite thick in the bottom I found it wasn't going onto the wood very well look a bit closer down here you may remember from previous videos I had some dark staining where the glue went off with a bit of careful work with a chisel and a card scraper I was just about able to remove most of that I started off with three basic coats of oil given the light sanding in between each coat just to clean the surface up a bit but then for the fourth coat I put it on with a cloth without sanding beforehand and that's given it quite quite a durable finish you know, it's almost, it almost feels as thick as a, well not quite as thick as a varnish, but it's, it's more durable, or it seems to be, than what you might expect from an oil finish. Anyway, that one's done now. And as you can see, it is fit for purpose. I only wish I had a fresh roll of paper towel to show you, so it actually see how much better it actually fits. Now buying this new tin of oil has allowed me to finish one other project as well. It's actually a wall cabinet made in Sapili, which is apparently part of the mahogany family that's native to Africa anyway. Um, this was originally my third year wood machining project from college back in 2010. Um, I bought it home in June this year and it's been sat in the workshop ever since really just waiting for the final coats. It's had a few knocks and dents un unfortunately in the time it's been here but now that oil's on there it's looking quite good I think. It's not my finest piece of um, furniture, craftsmanship, whatever you want to call it. I remember making this thing a lot of things actually went wrong. Some things even very badly wrong. I mean these panels here are veneered oak. This is MDF with oak veneers on either side. Um, originally I cut the oak veneers on my bandsaw, that went fine. I got them into college, glued them onto the MDF with a veneering press, that was okay. Now they were quite thick these veneers so I thought I'd put them through the sander. That's where it went wrong basically. I ended up with patches around here where it had gone through the through the oak into the MDF on both panels and yeah I had to throw it out of the way and start again really. It's a shame because I had some really nice oak, even nicer than what you can see here. Uh, you can probably tell that the gaps around the doors are a little larger than most people would like. I think these through tenons, wedged through tenons on the ends here, came out quite well. Previously they were uh, protruding about 3 or 4 millimetres, maybe even 6 mil, and was chamfered ends, but when I got this home I decided I didn't like that, and so I cut them off my router, nice and flush, gave it a good sanding, and got finishing, but again you've got the contrasting oak wedges in there. But yeah, Sapili is not something I normally work with, although seeing it now with this oil on here, in a way it all catches the, light, catches the light and it's quite attractive. Inside we were required to have a uh, means of storage for our shelves. I went with two shelves because it's a small cabinet. I think it works quite well. They are adjustable as well. These little lugs here fit into pre-drilled holes. But why I put them so high up, not like up here, I mean you're not really going to want a shelf up here, are you? I can get this one in, you see. And likewise at the bottom. What you really want... What have we got there? Inch and a half, maybe? I mean, what's going to fit in there? You know, they could have been better off in hindsight. It's having maybe three different heights around the middle here. We still get some variation, but... I'm reasonably, ple reasonably pleased with this, considering all that went wrong. 
and yeah, if I haven't mentioned already, the back panel is uh, veneered MDF. You also notice I fitted some magnetic um, stops. They're dead simple to make. A couple of magnets in the back of the door, which you can just about see there, one there. And on the other side of the top, you have two wooden blocks with screws so you can adjust for movement fore and aft so that the doors rest in the correct position. If you want them to be flush with the outside of the frame, or maybe set back in slightly. So if you haven't tried it already, I certainly do recommend this hard wax oil from Chestnut. I mean, I've used oil finishes, finishing oil, Danish oil, linseed oil, and then you, you can get a good finish, but for some reason, I don't know, it didn't quite compare to this one. If you haven't tried it already, it's certainly worth a look. So I think <coughs> I'd like to say thanks for watching my videos. I'm sorry again it's taken so long to update this one, but hopefully I'll have some more for you soon. So keep tuned, stay tuned, and keep checking my blog.